Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Jeremiah's J Man Manero with J Man Speaks coming to you live and direct from our world headquarters here in the Rock the CROC. We don't stop, ask the experts anything meaningful Fridays. Buyers, agents, presentations like a boss. That's what we're talking about today. Heck yeah, I'm excited. Uh, welcome, welcome, Flor, Flor de Maria. Welcome to Virginia. I love it. Okay, so. We got Billy and B-Towns in the building. We got Melissa from Ithaca. We got all kinds of folks from all over the country. You're going to watch this on the playback. Make sure you put it in the comments as well. Uh, we got South Florida. I don't know where you're from necessarily. We got Jose Cruz is in the building. And then we have, hey, it's my sister, Janet Mejias. Has camera, will travel. She's a photographer. So you're looking for a photographer for your great event. Hit her up. In the DMs, all right? Today we're talking about buyer's agent presentations. This has been my number one topic that, well, buyer's agency in general, uh, many changes in the real estate industry for the better. It's a great opportunity for you to redefine your value proposition. What does that mean? What do you bring to the table besides opening the door or opening a lockbox and saying, here's the kitchen? Hmm. Okay, because there may be... Uh, listings that you want to show that have zero compensation for a buyer's agent. So it's more important than ever for you to determine and establish and distinguish and describe. I'm using all my, my learning objectives, uh, what your value proposition is. You explain it to the buyer and the more you can pile on value, uh, the more likely they're going to want to work with you period. Okay. So, Oh, Jeffrey's here too. Jeffrey too. Welcome everybody. Okay. So where do we begin? What I, I want you to put it in, in the comments. Where do you first begin right now? If you get a buyer inquiry who call, you know, they call you and go, Hey, uh, maybe it comes through the internet or it's a referral or something. They go, I want to see this house, uh, at one, two, three, anywhere street. And you go, I'm so excited. I have a buyer. Whether you're a new agent, experienced agent, you haven't had a buyer in a while, you didn't want to work with buyers because it was tough uh, for you for, for a little bit, whatever the case may be. And then you, you're a Pop-Tart agent, right? You go, I'm here. I'll go show you the house right now. Okay. You hop in your car, go show them the house. That is not the way. Okay. Let us show you the way. Uh, you are going to be a professional. The first thing you're going to do when you get a referral, you get an inquiry, is you're going to say C-I-T-O. Come into the office. There are some things about the buying process that we would like to explain to you uh, so that we can position you for success. Okay. It's not like, hey, you got to meet me in the office because we got to go over a couple things. It's going to take a few hours. And uh, if we don't agree, then we don't work together. That's not, that's, that's not how I would say it. Uh, but we want to position you for success because that's the truth, right? You don't know if somebody calls you where they are in the process. Are they pre-approved? Are they pre-qualified? Are they working with other agents? Are they calling every agent possible to see when they can get in and as fast as they can get in and they're going to write offers with whoever they want. So first step, C-I-T-O. Now, uh, it's important in order to treat everybody uh, equally, fairly, honestly, uh, equal and ethical service to all that you want to uh, meet them in the office, but have a system in place so that every single time that you meet with someone, every single time you meet with someone, every single time you meet with someone, it's the same, right? Regardless whether they're male, female, green, red, blue, purple, it doesn't matter. Everybody's treated the same. So you have a process. So first step is that you bring them into the office. Now I'm going to pull up and this is just a form that I have. And you can create your own, but let me see how I want to do this. Whoop, there I am. There's the form behind me, and I'm going to make myself smaller. Okay, that's small enough. I'll go like this, and I'll lower myself to the little, little side over here. Okay, and then do this. Okay, that works. Okay. So, class, I have this really big form here to you for you to look at. But this could be depending, look, I'm not going to mock you if you're still using pen and paper. Some people, if you're kinesthetic, you like, you like writing it down. Uh, you can make this a fillable PDF, right? So you have, if you're using any kind of online transaction management, whether it's Instanet, Authentisign, uh, Zip Forms, DocuSign, whatever works. Uh, I don't have a favorite, whatever your, your market provides is fine. You could have this form. So now if you're ever audited or if there's ever an issue, you, you know, 
because uh, there are testers. There's a lot of testers out there that are testing you to make sure that you're treating everybody fairly. So you make this a PDF. I would make it a fillable PDF and, and have it on my my iPad, on my computer. And so you could fill it out, right? It's name, address, phone number, all, all the things that you need to know. Okay, but then it also goes a little bit further. Uh, how many are living in the house, children, grades in school? How soon do you need to be in your new home? Let's just move this over a little bit like this. Okay, because if you don't ask the right questions, you're not going to get the answers that you need. How soon do you need to be? What three things do you want most in your home? What features are important to you? Will it be necessary to market your home to purchase a new home? Do they have a home to sell? Is that important? Yes, yes, it is. Uh, how much time are you willing to drive to work? Where do you work? Length of employment. Okay, so you can go back and rip off and duplicate this whole thing. I'm fine with it. Uh, or you could take this, type it out. If you're nice, I might give it to you in a document in the comments by the end, but I got to figure out how I want to do that. Uh, length of employment. So you're asking important questions. Now, before this, obviously, depending on where you're watching, we have different ways uh, that we can work with a buyer, right? There's an agency disclosure before you have substantive con conversation, which means you start talking about where they work, how much money they make, their plans and such. You have to re review your agency disclosure form. Now, we have people from all over the United States, so I'm not going to review it now, but you're a buyer's agent. You want to be a buyer's agent. Uh, in, in, in this instance, I understand like in Florida, you might have transactional brokerage where you don't represent anybody. You just represent the transaction, so to speak. Uh, but I'm going to get to be a buyer's agent. Okay. How long have you been looking, et cetera? Has anyone, uh, when is the best time for you to look at a home? What size monthly payment would you be comfortable with? If we did find the, the home you'd be, would you be in a position to go ahead with a purchase? Has anyone recently explained to you how the bank will qualify you for a loan? Do you have any judgments, liens, divorces, da, 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 da. total PITI qualify for? Okay, and that's that's just getting started. Now, let me disappear that. I showed it all to you. Boop, boop. Move myself back over here. I'll grow up a little bit. Hold on. I never grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid. Okay, so that's step one. Step one is get them to the office. Ask those questions. Now, oh, I'm going to get an exclusive here to review with you as well. Um, exclusive. What other things do you think would be important to go over with them? Hmm. I'm ready. Anyone? Okay. Uh, my favorite question to ask is what matters to you most? Okay. Uh, you know, in your search, like let's say if you're working with first-time home buyers uh, or millennials, there's usually two types of buyers. We call them uh, the romantics, which means they they want to write their love story, if you will. They're looking for a fixer-upper. They watch HGTV. They really like it. Or there's the dinks, the dual income, no kids. Uh, they make money. They want something that's turnkey. They don't want to do a lot of work. They're not at home very often. Um, I'm overgeneralizing, but you get the idea. Now, if I'm a romantic and my wife and I are looking at homes and I say, oh, you know what? I really want a fixer upper because we want to do some home improvement. And, and I'm a millennial and you're a boomer and you look at me and say, oh, child, that's not what you need. What you really need is this, right? And you, uh, <laughs> you show them houses that are turnkey. Well, you're not listening. Okay. Yeah. What matters to you most? Exactly right, Melissa. Um, I give them a roadmap to closing to see the steps, inspection, appraisal, et cetera. Yeah, I, I would ask an open-ended question like, what do you know about, what's your impression of real estate so far? Like, and I sit there and I go, and they go, oh, well, I watch HGTV and I think, you know, we'll find, we'll look at three houses and then we're going to close in 30 minutes. <laughs> well, that's not the case. Or, well, I heard a horror story of a friend of mine, or I used to work with another agent that we don't want to work with him anymore or her anymore, right? Listen, because they're going to tell you everything that matters most to them. If they say, I want to buy a foreclosure, don't say, oh, you don't want that. It's what they want. You have to listen. Okay. What, what matters to you most? Uh, but then explain the process. Cause if you have somebody that's moving from, let's say Florida or, or a title state to New York, 
It's a very different process. We use attorneys. Only 20% of our closings happen on time. So if we're working backwards, you know, I would say, let, let's forward pace you a little bit. Let's say you're, you're turning the key and you're opening the door to the, the home of your dreams. What does that look like to you? And then what was the experience leading up to it? And they'll tell you, right? They'll go, oh, well, you know, we really want to find this and we want something that's, that's easy, but the process, we don't really know what to expect. So we're not sure. Uh, we talked to a person on the phone. We got pre-qualified. We're not sure if that's good enough, right? So find out what they know first. Second, uh, second, which is very important, and I'm, I'm going to do it, go to a different screen for this, is explain to them the market realities, right? It's up to us. And if you're a buyer's agent, there's a, there's a number of different ways. If you have uh, market stats or Domus analytics in your MLS, man, it's fantastic. Okay. But if you don't, and you're in a realtor market, RPR, the Realtor Property Resource, is truly your best resource to explain the market realities. Like you want to go deep and say, okay, here's our average list price to sale price ratio. Meaning if a property is on the market, here's what it would sell for. You know, in the area that most recently that I wrote an offer, it was 118.9%. So that's almost 20% over asking. So if I have a buyer that's looking for homes in the $200,000 range, right? Let's say their, their pre-approval goes up to 200,000. I can't show them homes that are $200,000 and expect to position them for success. Let me say that one more time. If I have a client that's pre-approved for an amount and I know that properties are going over that amount, guess what I need to do? show them prices or show them homes in a little bit lower of a price range so that when it escalates over the, the list price, they can still compete. If you say, oh, you're 200. Yeah, let's look at homes at 200. And those homes are selling for 240 because it's 20% over asking on average if it's priced right in good condition. So you do that. Now, let me, let me share the screen one second. My friends coming over here to the shared. Boop, boop. Okay, this is Canva. That's not what I want to show you right now. I'm going to go over here to um, uh, well, to show you what a report would look like. I prepared this ahead of time. Yee. Well, that's pulling up. Give me a second here. So this is 205 English Road. Where do I want to sit? Move this here. Bring this down like that. Okay. 205 English Road. Now I can look through this and it'll tell me, you know, my refined value. Dang, this is really good. This property listed for 124.9, sold for 141, actually. Okay, so that's right on the money. But um, it's gonna tell you all the things you need to do. Extended home facts, it's gonna tell you the total score, the AARP livability index you know, market conditions, any adjustments you may have made, historical photos, right? So if you're, you know, again, if you're, you're talking with a buyer, you're explaining to them, like, here's what the property used to look like, the history. Okay, this is the actual report. But if I went in here and I said, I want to do research, you could do it right there, but you can do market trends. My market, so let's say I want to do market trends. Come in here, explore shareable market trends. Yeah, okay, show me. Start by clicking research. Okay, now I want to look at, I can look at residential market trends and I'm going to enter a zip code. This is the hottest zip code in the country according to realtor.com. Look at what it shows me here. Find all the high level market trends for the area. So when we say high level, like for me, I'm a high D on the, on the disc profile, right? I'm like, don't give me all the deets. I just want to know, give me the macro. Tell me like, what, what am I looking at here? Okay. Um, okay. Next. So if I go like this, typically a seller's market is when there's less than three months worth of inventory. Well, look at this market. There's a half a month worth of inventory, one half. Okay, so that's 
an extreme seller's market. List price to sold, sold price percentage, 105.9%. Median days in RPR is seven. Median sold price is 470, right? So I'm using this to educate my clients on what to expect because if you wanna deliver good service, you have to give them realistic expectations. It's not that you're gonna write one offer, get it accepted under asking. That's not realistic depending on the market and where you are, okay? The other, this is, this is really good. I'm not gonna to take too much time on this. But the second one here is Domus, Domus Analytics. Now, it'll be a little bit pricey for you to pay for it directly, uh, but I'm sure your, your MLS has some sort of statistic stats that you can go in and, and check out. I love this because, look at this, it makes it easy. I'm gonna go market review. I like the market review better, but like here's the statistics, but the market review kind of brings it a little bit, gives you more things to choose from. So I'm gonna go again, I'm gonna go Pittsburgh, New York, watch this. I go Monroe or Monroe, and then I go like this, and I'm gonna say Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh Village because there's the village inside of Pittsburgh. Now look at this. This is just visually appealing for me. It, it, I, I don't want like a market report that's 20 something pages. Like this would be good enough to review to your client. But when you're reviewing statistics, it's not just what are they? It's like, what does it mean to you? What does it mean to you as a first time home buyer? What does it mean to you if you have a grant program? What does it mean to you if you have concessions? Because those are all concerns depending on, on you know, how aggressive your market is. So look, 22 closed sales, nine days on market, 106.6%. So the other one was just a little bit, I think, because I included the village here. Price per square foot, active listings, month supply of inventory. So if I'm explaining to a buyer what's happening, I'm going to say, hey, look, at there's not a lot of inventory on the market. So we need to be positioned for success. Instead of a pre-qualification, maybe we need to get a pre-approval or a pre-commitment, which means you've gone to the bank, you've, you've, you've gotten everything, You've submitted everything, all of your documents. They take that that uh, application, your loan application, and do an automated underwriting system, AUS. They submit it, and they get an approval. Now they just have to wait for a property and order an appraisal. That's as good as it can get because there's a high likelihood in this market that I'm showing you here that there's going to be multiple offers. So position them for success. Okay, Educate them on the market realities. Now... Next, I'm going to show you my three favorite uh, programs to create presentations. But what do you think we should do before we create the, like, what should go in there? Or what else should you share with the clients about you? What should you develop? What should you create? What should you know? Hmm. Hold on, I make this a little bigger. Whoop. Okay. I'll give you a hint. They need to know about you as an agent. Uh, we're not gonna, we weren't gonna make this about your unique value proposition, but it's important that you know that. Your unique value proposition is what makes you better, but it's a number of things that can make you better. For example, if I spoke Spanish, right? Yeah, quick overview, perfect, Melissa, right? Uh, and, and Melissa, I think you've been a your lifelong resident of Ithaca. I'm just trying to pull out things that uh, would make you better than the next agent, right? So if, if you, Melissa lives in Ithaca her whole life, born and raised, knows the town, knows everybody, knows Tom, you know, the surrounding counties and everywhere else, that's a benefit. Like who better to help you buy a home in an area that really doesn't have a lot of inventory and, you know, you want to make sure that you're making the right decision. Somebody who's lived there their whole life. Yeah, 29 year, 28 years in the business. Absolutely. Right. While education is important, there's no substitution for experience. In 28 years, Melissa's done hundreds, maybe thousands of transactions. Each transaction is teaching her about the real estate business, and she's able to share that with her potential buyer. Now, uh, I said in the beginning, if I was able to speak Spanish, which I speak Spanglish, right? Uh, my sister, she's still on. She She's much better than me. But if, if I, yeah, with Jersey girl, that's right. Uh, it, if I, if I spoke Spanish, then it's like the fastest growing demographic for first time home buyers is, uh, Hispanics. 
fastest growing demographic for first time home buyers in the United States. So who better to communicate more effectively with their client than somebody who speaks their language. Okay. Before I was in real estate, I, I went, I used to door knock door to door selling alarm systems. I literally walked every street in every neighborhood who better to teach you about the pros and cons of what each community brings to you. See where I'm going. So typically it's, it's three E's education, experience and, and expertise, education, what you to go to school for, apply it to real estate. And what does it mean to the client? Okay. Uh, additional designations that you may get. If you have the ABR designation, the accredited buyer representative, that's fantastic. Explain what it means to the client and why they should. If you have your GRI designation, same thing. I am an associate broker, highest form of licensing. You can, you can receive in New York state. Wouldn't you want somebody representing you as their, as your exclusive buyer's agent to have the highest form of licensing, which means I took an additional 75 hours and additional five years worth of experience to be sure that I was able to achieve that level. Of course you would. Right. And so going down everything that you do, uh, now it may make sense for you to put this into a resume or print out your LinkedIn profile. I would prefer a resume because it's more professional and I'm always willing to do the things that other agents won't do. Cause like, what do I need a resume for? Well, you don't need it cause you're not going to get hired. Uh, I'm going to, Oh, look, my wife's on here too. Um, hi, Christina. Christina is a wonderful buyer's agent cause she listens. To, the, to her clients. She does everything the same all the time. She's very detail oriented. Okay. Now creating the presentation, this is going to be different for each one of you, but if you don't already have, hold on, let me give you this access to my GPT update. Confirm. Okay. So you can go into GPT and have it outline your entire presentation. Okay. Which I did that. I did that for you. Watch this. I'm going to switch screens real fast. Come back over here. Okay. Now check this out. Get ready, getting ready, getting ready now. Okay. Exclusive buyer's agent presentations outline. This is what I said to it. I said, create a presentation outline with what information should be on each slide and an image suggestion. So you can go, um, slide one, title slide, exclusive buyer representation, your path to the perfect home. Introduction, your name, title, and a brief welcome message. Slide three, what is buyer representation? Explaining that. Slide four, why choose an exclusive buyer's agent? Slide five, my value proposition. You with me still? Slide six, success story. Seven, process. Eight, customized property search. Now, let me stop there for a second. It's important when you're discussing criteria that they tell you where they want to live, not the other way around. Right. If a, a buyer comes to you and says, I want to live in a nice neighborhood, that's not up for you to, for you to determine what a nice neighborhood is, right? That, could, that would, could be a fair housing violation. You know, they say, what, what, what constitutes a good neighborhood to you? Uh, what do you like to do in your spare time, et cetera. Negotiation and closing support, communication, commitment, market analysis, financial guidance, technology and tools, professional network, call to action, Q and a, thank you. Okay. Now you see the way I did this, I have content meaning like what's the words that'll go on my slide and then image suggestion, a question mark or a speech bubble. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So if I go, I can go like this 17 slides might be a lot, but let's see if this works. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. I'm going to go like this copy. Now let's start with beautiful.ai it's stunning what you can do with a little ai 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 yo oh my god okay we're gonna log in quickly then it's just brief introduction to each one of these and then i'll let you run wild okay now i'm gonna go to create presentation blank presentation or generate with AI. Here we go. Now I'm going to do exclusive buyer agent presentation, presentate, shun. Okay. I'm going to provide additional context. 
text. Okay. Paste. I got all my tings here. I want to see if this works out. I'm going to go generate presentation. It's cooking. It's cooking. Oh, baby, it's cooking. Let's get a drum roll, please. It's not ready yet. Okay, let me go back over here. Well, that's it's going to take a second. I'm going to go to the next one, gamma.app. Okay, gamma.app. And I'm going to do the same thing. Create new with AI. Let's see. Do I want to generate from one line prompt, create from notes and outline or existing content? Yes, I do. That's what I want to do right there. Okay. I don't know if I would take the time. Probably would take the time and go like this. Slide two. I'm not sure it matters, but it's bothering me out being all like that. So do we do we have any questions as we're waiting? Gamma.app is free. They all have free trials. You get more uh, capability. Like I upgraded this gamma.app because it only allowed me to do 10 slides. And so that's why. But 10 slides could be good enough for you, depending. Slide 10, slide 12, slide 13, slide 14. Come on. Here, I'm going to I'll play a little something. Okay. See, that would just give you right here. Continue. Baby, come on. Baby, come on. Okay. Then they're going to ask me additional questions. Of course, right? For potential home buyers seeking inclusive representation. Yes. Yes. Tone, professional, knowledgeable, and trustworthy. Yes. Uh, amount of text per card, medium. Yes. Text content, generate. Fill in your outline with added details. While keeping your original content. Ah, what do I want to do? I'm going to do brief. I want to do brief. And I want to do generate, but I also want to say preserve. But let's just see what happens because we're just... How many cards do we have here? We got 17. Okay. Then it's going to ask us for some kind of template. Which do you like? I'm going to go... Uh, I don't like this one. Actually, this goes with my 18 Friday colors. I'm going to do this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, let's generate. While that's cooking, we're going to go back to beautiful.ai. Here we go. Exclusive buyer agent presentation. Uh, establishing mutual beneficial exclusive buyer relationship. What is exclusive buyer representation? Look at this. The AI created the copy here. Okay. Benefits of exclusive buyer's agent, dedicated adv advocacy, expansive market knowledge, negotiation expertise. Now, let me say this. If you already have, let me see here. If you already have uh, slides or an existing presentation that you may want to import into this, you can do that as well. Okay. I'm not going to cover that, but you can do that. Now, this is really good, but let me just see. I want to go back. Let's, what's this one? John Doe. This is right. Information about you. I could use AI to write that and make it better. Put your image there. Let me show you what the slides are like here, why I like this better. Because if you're going to put in statistics, right, there should be something on, on the market, let's say. Um, data and chart slides. My wife's going to like this if she's still watching. Um, now, if you were going to create like slides and things like that for, okay, what kind of charts do we want to do? Waterfall. Bar chart. If you're going to do a slide like this in PowerPoint, it's a little bit more challenging to make these. 
And so you can go like this. I could import data from a PDF or a CSV file, um, but I can edit the chart like this. I can change what the columns represent, the values, the categories, the chart options, all of these things, and it'll automatically watch. If I go 90, what happens? Ooh, it went up. Okay. Now watch. Keep going. I'm going to keep it going. All these slides, they're smart slides, which means when you change something on it, I'm going to do bullet points. We'll do these bullet points here. Okay, so if I go like this, like this, and I do another one. If I delete something, it's going to automatically adjust it. Okay? Automatically adjust each slide. Like if I take this and I go, hmm, I want to make that this bigger or whatever. So it automatically adjusts. Let's just say that. So if you're not savvy with PowerPoint, the presentations at all, this is the answer for you. Okay, client success stories. You see it like it went through my whole outline. Overview of the home buying process, customized property search, property search website, map with pins, camera, camera representing how I will personally visit. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I like that. I might put like a video, you know, and you could always change the images here like this. I want to replace an image. Videographer. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, watch this. See, that changed it up a little bit. It's nice. Those are all royalty free images as well. Contract negotiation and closing, ongoing communication. What does communication look like to you? How would you like to communicate? What's the best way? Is it. Facebook Messenger, is it Instagram DM? Is it text message? Is it email? Is it phone call? Remember, we have these smartphones that actually call people. Uh, what does it look like? You know, how would you like me to communicate with you and how often? The frequency of it, right? If you called me every day and you were my buyer's agent, you would get fired immediately. Okay. So ongoing communication, local market insights. Again, like you can adjust this average days on market, active listings you can add, you know, using the information that you gathered from the other program we showed you earlier, financial guidance. And then I might have like a, a thank you or something at the end. Um, and I might have actually a compensation related uh, one towards the end, how we're compensated. Uh, and then I, at the end, I would review the exclusive right to represent. Okay. Now, here is the one from gamma.app. Oh, it's still going. We'll we'll let it we'll let it work. We'll let it work. We'll come back to it. Now Canva also has, if I go to presentations and I said, okay, I want to create a presentation. Exclusive buyer representation. Uh let's do this. Watch this. Boom. Apply all 21 pages. I just did a 21 page buyer presentation in Canva in 45 seconds. Now you pick, you can come in here and pick your color scheme. If you come in here, like actually look at your brand kit, it can all be in there for you. But let's bring this, hide that for a second and go through it. Agenda about the realtor, career timelines about you, testimonials uh, about the company. Here are some homes, home buying process, check your credit score get pre-approved, figure out how much you can spend, find the right real estate agent, go house hunting, go house hunting, make your offer, set a date, close the sale, home buying process, and on and on and on. Okay, 21 pages. Again, what does this say? D for a drum roll. Oh, that's cool. I just learned something. It gave me a resource page in, in Canva. All right, so what questions do we have about what we've talked about so far. You were a lively bunch earlier. All of a sudden, you're very quiet, and I don't like the silence, okay? So, I'm seeing what I'm going to do. Choose the right to represent you. I'm going to get something up here for a second. Last but not least, what I'm going to review with you is... I want to find the right one.
New York State. All right, let me just do this one. Let's see if this works. Yeah, there it is. Okay, too small. And then I'm going to bring myself on the front of it. One second. Here we go. Here we go. There I am. There I is. Okay. So every state has one or find one or talk to your, your manager. But there's a couple things I'll review quickly in here because I don't want to, I'm not going to talk about compensation on a live stream. Okay. Uh, but you have to make sure you have the buyer's name. Okay. Your name, broker name, of course. Uh, where they're looking, you want that to be as open as possible. Okay. If you service like a three county area, I might put, you know, Monroe, Orleans, put all the counties that they may be looking because if it's not in writing, then it doesn't exist, right? Uh, there's a term of the agreement typically. Now, if you get any pushback from a buyer, it's like, I don't want to commit to one agent. Okay. Um, well, would you commit to me for just one day? Like we're going to go look at these houses and how it works is there's a, you know, explain the whole process. Uh, but if you were to buy these, these properties, then there is compensation that's due to me as a buyer's agent. And then however it works in your market, however you want to explain that, I'm not going to explain it on the live stream so that I don't get in any trouble as far as talking about percentages or anything. Okay. Uh, now there are, there's, depending on where you are in the country, there's a couple of different ways you can get paid. Uh, it's buyer percentage or a retainer or by the hour. Okay. But talk to your manager about that. It talks about usually what the client's uh, duties are, you know, any other potential buyers, any conflicts, things like that. Okay. Oops. Got rid of myself. One sec. <laughs> okay. And then What else do you think we should leave them with? Anything? At the end, I like to leave them with a buyer's guide or something that has a checklist. Uh, you're going to do your presentation. You're going to get your exclusive rights to represent sign, of course. Um, let me find my right buyer's guide. Buyer's guide. Find it. Yeah, like a booklet or something uh, that has, of course, I would like to leave them with multiple business cards, explain how open houses work. Uh, I have a nice buyer's guide if you want it. Let's see. Is this it? Yeah, this is it. Hold on one second. I'm going to bring this in again. Boop, boop. Boop, boop, beep, doop. I <laughs> just did Betty Boop. I don't know where that came from. Okay, can you all see that? Okay, yeah, you can. It's all over there. So this buyer's guide book, it's 51 pages. It has a ton of resources. This is my leave behind. Uh, if you want this, you get to send me. If you want this, I want you to share this live stream. If you share this live stream and say uh, with agents or in, in an agent group, don't share this with the general public because this content is not meant for everybody. It's meant just for agents. Uh, I'll give you this guidebook for free. Okay. Table of contents. You have all kinds of things. So a lot of things that you're going to cover in that. Let me just, why is this not going to the next page? Okay. Seven reasons to work with a realtor. Uh, questions to ask when hiring. What it says. Yeah, when choosing a realtor. And more. Why isn't this? I'm going to do this differently. Okay, I'm going to bring this over my other screen. Hold on one second. Bring this over. But it's all about resources. It's all about being the source of sources and things that they can reference. Some people do like checklists. Christina. Okay. Sharing with all emotions in motions. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. 
Okay, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to share this other screen like this, and then I'm going to bring it over here. Screen number three. One second. Because this is really great. This is worth the wait. Okay, buyer's guidebook. Okay, perfect. Now, this will work better. Seven reasons to home. Seven reasons to work with a realtor. Questions when choosing a realtor. Questions when choosing agency and agency relationships. Prepare for house hunting. Prepare to buy a home. Track your budget. That's that's an eye opening one. Uh, what to know about credit scores. How to improve your credit score. Prepare to finance a home. Loans and loan lending terms. Questions to ask when choosing a lender. Financing a home creatively. Defining your dream home. Questions when considering a condo or HOA, home inspector, home hazards, green home terms, and so much more. Okay? It's pretty damn good. You're welcome. Now, any other questions, put them in the comments. And I'm here for you. Today is National Wear Red Day. We do wear red on Fridays to, to remember everyone deployed. Red for Fridays, but today is definitely uh, National Wear Red Day, and I think that's for heart smart awareness. Thank you, Flor de Maria, Flor de Maria, Flor de Maria, Flor de Maria. Can't, it's a good, great name. I like it. Uh, all right. Well, my name's Jeremiah, it's J Man Monero, J Man Speaks. Thank you for tuning in to 18 Fridays. You could always watch the playback and play it back. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Jeremiah's J-Man Monero, where J-Man Speaks.